Hello everyone, so I'm back with part two of the Jane themed journal series and just to kind of go back to where we left off from I'm showing what I've completed in the journal so far so what I'm showing you right here is everything that I did in that first journal making series and now I'm on to more of a Jane theme type of journal making here where I'm using some of the vintage uh, ladies and more of a softer feminine theme to the pages that I'll be doing. So I'm going to pick up from where I last left off and I'm going to start with these air mail envelopes. And I used this doily stencil. Now I have some of these in stock, some premium ones here that you're um, seeing. And I do have quite a few of those in stock if you are wanting to use these doily stencils. And then I took some of the Distress Oxide in China, or the Broken China, and actually it's kind of a combination of that with the hickory smoke combined because I used the same dauber. <laughs> and then I used uh, some stamps from the Tim Holtz Correspondence Stamp Set and the Spill Splatters stencil. And then I have this Documents Only stamp. I found that at Goodwill. It was just one of those wonderful finds, and I love that stamp. I use it a lot. So anyways, I'm going to start with the Broken China, and again, I had some hickory smoke in my dauber there, so it's kind of a blend of the Broken China with the hickory smoke, and that's how I'm getting this grayish, tealy blue color. Tealy? <laughs> I don't think that's a word, but... Yeah, teal blue, like gray teal blue color. And then I'm going to take some of the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide and go over that with that Spill Splatter stencil and just randomly apply some of the coffee stain rings onto the envelope. And then distress my edges, get it to where it's all kind of, you know, that vintage look as opposed to a brand new airmail envelope. You guys like my uh, Mickey Mouse pajamas there? <laughs> I, yeah, I live in my pajamas, especially my Mickey Mouse. I have my Mickey Mouse t-shirt on, my Mickey PJs. I love Mickey Mouse. Just love them. Anyway, I took some of the plum color in that archival ink and then stamped the documents only onto the envelope. So now what I want to do is I kind of just want to add a little bit more to it. And so I'm going to take from the collaged rose, uh, one of the digital papers, and just tear a section of that and add that to my envelope. I liked the section that had some of the script on it. I thought that that would go well on the envelope because I have the stamped text documents only. So I figured with some of that script and some of those other fonts of text, it would tie in well with what I already had going on with the envelope. But at the same time, I don't want to cover up my stamp work or a lot of the stencil work. So I'm just trying to shape this piece a little bit more to where it won't cover up, you know, all of my stamp or stencil work there. And then once I think I have it somewhat how I'd like it, I'm going to glue it down and then I can just trim off those excess edges there. So I'm going to just take some of my white glue, my Dreams ETC glue, which works great for so many things. I love it because it dries quick. It holds things in place. It's a really strong glue. And then I'm taking the Distress Oxide and the Vintage Photo and just going around some of those edges to blend everything in. And now I'm just thinking I want to add a little bit of softness to the envelope. So I have some of this trim here and I'm going to take just a small piece of that 
and add that to my envelope again just to kind of add some texture and softness to the envelope. Okay, so now I'm thinking I want to add one of these ladies to the envelope and so I'm grabbing one of the papers from the embroidered lace collection and I'm going to fussy cut her out and then I also like some of the ribbon that was on the edge of the paper and I'm going to fussy cut that out as well. I didn't realize how <laughs> I was a little bit out of the camera there but I think I do bring it back into the center so bear with me <laughs> on that. Um, but you can see where I have her fussy cut and I'm just kind of trying to get some sort of idea of how I want this envelope to to come together. And then I also fussy cut out that ribbon there with some of the pearls and the the lace from that edge of the paper as well as the stitched section of the paper. And again, just trying to place everything, seeing how I want to lay it down on the envelope. I, I don't want to cover up everything I did though. Again, all that stamp work and stencil work, I don't want to cover it all up. I'm just trying to add a little softness to it. Uh, and I want it to be a little more feminine, Jane-ish like. <laughs> You guys know what I mean. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing here. And you know, when I do these projects, again, I don't have them planned. You guys are seeing how I work through my process. So one thing I do is I cut up sections of papers and uh, things that I think I might use. And sometimes I don't end up using it, sometimes I do and that's just my whole creative process because I feel like when I have things laid out and a lot of things in front of me that I can grab and and put down and just place that's when things come together for me and that's what helps give me ideas so as you can see I cleared everything off and now I'm thinking I wanted to do something a little different. So I took some of this antique crocheted lace and I liked the way it, I have it placed in between where I stamped documents only and airmail. And then I'm going to take that piece of ribbon that I cut from the paper and I'm going to place that over that crocheted lace. I just decided that I wanted more of, you know, where I stenciled and I wanted it to have more of a mixed media type look and so, and, and you know, just not cover everything up and so I simplified it a little bit. Now I'm just taking a little bit of this sheer ribbon just to add, again, a little more texture to the, the envelope there and also help give the illusion that that paper ribbon is actually like fabric ribbon. Just kind of trick the eye a little bit. And then I liked this stitched piece that I cut from the paper just to give it kind of again that illusion of like it was sewn across the top of the envelope. So I'm just going to fussy cut around that a little more, around that stitching, and then glue it down onto the envelope. Now, if you don't have airmail envelopes, you could take some washi tape that might have those airmail stripes to them, or just a plain envelope and dress it up and use the same techniques that you're seeing me do here. Doesn't have to be identical, but it's just to give you guys ideas of how to take stencils and stamp and tearing papers and using some of your scraps of trim and how you can use those to decorate just a plain envelope. So I'm liking the way this is coming along. 
I decided that I was going to tear some muslin fabric and I'm just going to take and uh, pull some of the threads there to give it kind of that ragged edge. And I'm thinking that I might want to add this to the bottom of the envelope. I love, again, you guys know me by now, I love all those layers textures it's in everything that I do I just it is those fine details you hear me say this all the time but it makes all the difference all those smaller finer details okay so I kind of scrapped the muslin fabric for now and I decided that I still want to add a little more pink to the envelope so I'm taking some of this pink ribbon and I'm going to glue that down onto that right edge there. I liked this trim in particular because you can still see the airmail stripe underneath it. Okay and then I th think I want to add a different trim to that left side just to balance everything out and so I picked this it's kind of a peachy pink lace trim and I'm going to apply that to the other side. Now I know it might seem like this is a lot for just one envelope <laughs> um, but you know once you do one and you know what you're doing then it goes a lot quicker with each one so I mean if you were gonna sit down and do this I would probably do like 10 at a time you know, and then you'll have envelopes ready for when you do other journals. Or maybe you want to just make a bundle of envelopes and give them as gifts. Uh, create stationery, I'd like a real vintage distressed sort of stationery, it'd be so cool. Okay, so I'm back to that piece of muslin and I decided I'm going to stamp it. Again, I'm using the stamps from the Tim Holtz correspondence set. and. I do have a few of these in stock. This is one stamp set I use a lot. I love this stamp set. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to just take a few of those different stamps and I'm using the archival ink in the plum and then uh, I thought that would look kind of neat going underneath my envelope there. And then I'm just going to take some of my white glue and glue it down and I think it's looking pretty good. I think it's done. Or not. <laughs> I decided that I wanted to add just one more stamp to that upper left corner there. So I'm going to stamp that on and then, then I think it's done. I just felt like something was missing there because I have all this collage going on everywhere and it was the one space that just didn't have anything so you know me I had to put something there and I thought that this stamp would go perfectly okay so that is done now let's move on to the next thing so what I thought I would do now is I have all this parchment paper and if you go to the dollar store or Dollar Tree you can find a roll of parchment paper there and I like working with parchment because it has just this neat texture to it and you can see through it it's kind of like vellum in a way and I thought what I would do is stamp over a piece of this vellum I think it's like a six by six sized sheet that I cut down and so I'm using one of my stamps with the archival ink and then I did find that I had to heat set it to prevent it from smudging with the type of parchment that I was using and I know that there is different sorts of parchment papers out there so the one I had I didn't realize it was like for baking and the stuff that you can get at the Dollar Tree is also for baking but I did find that if you use the archival ink and then you heat set it and you can actually see the color fade as you heat set it then it will not smudge on the page so I'm just taking various stamps that I have and just kind of doing this little collage 
onto the parchment paper. And again, I'm using a lot of the stamps from the correspondence stamp set, my documents only, and then this hand. And I have the one, if you don't have this one, I do have my dragonfly one that you could use. That'd be totally cool on this. Um, and then the colors that I'm using is just the black and the plum. And then I thought I would take some of my floral washi tape, and I do have some of this available for sale. And I thought that I would just add a little bit to the edges. I wanted to just, I don't know, somehow add a little bit more to it, some sort of design element to it, and I thought the washi tape would work perfectly. And so what I'm going to do with this is I decided to create a pocket with it and I liked the idea of it because then I'd be able to see what I have placed underneath and I think I'm going to use some lined papers and that is that's my plan anyway <laughs> and again don't forget when you do get done stamping be sure to heat set it and then I'm just kind of rounding off the corners there because I am making a pocket with it. I like those rounded corners. And here's where you see me heat setting it. You can see the color fade a little bit as the heat goes over it. And when it does it, it that means it's set on that paper and it shouldn't smudge on you after you heat set it. And I did find I had to glue the washi tape down because it didn't stick really good to the parchment paper, but the glue worked good in keeping everything held down. So now I'm just trying to figure out where I want to place this pocket, and I decided to use it on the back side of that signature page I was working on in that part one of this series. And I'm trying to figure out where I might want to place the envelope, just figuring out how I want to kind of lay my page. And I thought that that darker pink where the, that has that damask pattern, just that strip there, I thought the envelope would hinge onto there real nicely. And so I, I'm thinking I'm going to place the envelope there. And then on the other side is where I want to put my parchment pocket and now I'm taking some lined papers and I got these papers at the Dollar Tree or I should say I I pulled them out from a paper pad that I got at the Dollar Tree uh, and then here where that Paris tab I took that from one of the envelopes from the what was it um, Parisian charm digital collection so I just cut that top flap there, and I thought that would look kind of neat placed underneath my parchment pocket there. So then I'm just going to glue that top flap that says Paris underneath, and then I have my pocket. And as you can see, you can kind of see through that parchment, and that's what I love about it, and I like the texture. I just I like the way it crink that the crinkling sound that it makes. <laughs> I just like the look. I, I like the different looks of papers and again to me it's just what creates so much interest to a page. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm thinking, is in that upper section there, I thought I would take an envelope just of one that I'm going to repurpose. It's one that came with bills and I liked the window of it. So I'm going to cut that section that has the window and I think I'm going to create another pocket, a see-through pocket at the top there. And so I'm just going to cut that down to have it so it fits at the top and then I thought that I would use the lady from one of the collaged rose envelopes and have her so she's showing through that window. So I'm just going to cut her out and have her placed inside the window of that envelope. So after I have her all cut out, she fits 
perfectly inside. I love it. I love the way she appears through that window. So now I'm just going to distress those edges. And then I think instead of gluing her down onto the page, I'm going to take that top flap and just use that to have it hang from the top of the page there and tuck it down a little bit into that parchment pocket. And I really like the way this page is starting to come along. So I decided to take the special delivery stamp from the correspondence set and I'm going to take that and stamp it at the top of the envelope. And then I'm not sure about this little flower that I fussy cut. I, I don't think I end up using that. I want to add a little more trim to that edge there on that parchment pocket just to kind of finish that edge off a little better. Now I'm just going to glue down another piece of scrap crochet lace at the bottom. Again, just adding those different textures, softening things up just a little bit. And I added a little more of the pink trim over the top of that, just to kind of tie things together there. And now I'm working at that top section of that window envelope and I'm not sure. I thought that I would try taking a little bit more of that trim that I had and then applying the flower. And I kind of like the looks of that. I don't know. The flower that I cut, it's got that <laughs> kind of hard edge on the left side. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to use that. I decided to use my airmail washi tape instead just to bring in that element from my airmail envelope and I thought that that would kind of help tie that in to the page a little better. So I'm just going to apply a strip at that top right edge and then I decided to take just a little strip of it and apply it to that other edge there. And I think that that just worked perfectly. <laughs> Love it. And now I'm just going to take a little bit one of... <laughs> I'm going to take one of these flowers from this trim and add that to that right side and I think yes I think that looks good and I can call that page done except for I do want to add in some of the lined paper into the pocket I think but yeah I like the way that looks and then there is that magenta damask patterned paper, just that strip there, that I'm going to use as a hinge and I'm going to glue my envelope down onto it. And yeah, I like the way that this is coming together. So let's work on another section of this this uh, signature page. Oh, first, yes, I want to add in those lined papers that I was talking about. I just want to add those into that pocket there because I always want to have my space for journaling. And yeah, I love it. Okay, so I'm just going to try to figure out here which section I want to work on next. I did decide that I wanted to add a few of the coffee stain splatters there to that parchment pocket just to kind of finish it off a little more, grunge it up just a little bit. And there, yeah. 
Now I think it's done. Well, we'll distress the edges. Now I think it's done. <laughs> Okay, so what I thought I would do is dress up that doily flap there. And so I'm using some of my eyelet. It's kind of a peachy pink shade, which I thought goes really nicely with the design elements that I chose. I'm taking a top flap from one of the collage rose envelopes, and I think I'm going to just create kind of a belly band going across that flap there and then I have one of my easy cuts this is from the floral easy cuts and uh, it has a butter it has butterflies in it and so I took one of the butterflies and I'm going to use that at the top there and then to make sure that my flap is durable I had these postcards that I bought at Goodwill in Montana <laughs> And they're all the same. <laughs> it's this tractor on a farm somewhere. And I thought that I could use them for something. And I like the back because it's got the postcard back. So anyway, I thought that I would just kind of use that to make my flap more durable. And then on the other side, at least I'll have that kind of neat postcard look on the other side even though I don't know for sure if you're going to be able to see the other side I'm not sure how I'm going to put this together quite yet I'm thinking that I'm just gonna have it more as a decorative element and possibly slide something through there I don't know this is where I just kinda I get these ideas and I never know for sure how I'm going to Put things together <laughs> I just yeah you kind of just go with the flow so now I'm going to glue that down onto the trim and then take and glue the trim down onto that doily flap and I'm just going to glue uh, the left and right edges of that trim because I want to be able to slide something through there So as you can see, I'm taking my fabric glue and just, again, gluing down just those edges to make sure that it allows for me to, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to put a tag through there or what yet, but I'll slide something through there. I just don't know what yet. I was thinking that this little white bag would be kind of cute, and then I can take and put a tag inside of that bag or I might use this ephemera piece from the embroidered lace collection and I'm kind of liking the way that looks so I think I'm going to go with that and I'm just going to distress those edges up a little bit and place my butterfly down onto that white paper bag that little white paper bag add a little trim in the center of the butterfly just to kind of soften things up and then I think that looks good. I think we'll probably call that done. Or not. <laughs> oh my gosh, I never know when to leave a page alone, do I? Okay, so it's not done. I had to add a little bit of bling to it, so I took some of the gold diamond wrap and just cut strips of it and little pieces and just using that to kind of give that little bit of bling to the page. Again, it's those little details. You guys hear me say it all the time. It makes all the difference. So I think after I add this, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty much done with these pages right here. And then I move on to some new journal pages. Okay, there is one other thing I wanted to add real quick is this edge of the page. I just wanted to soften it up again. Uh, it just seemed like I had this really hard edge and I didn't like it. So I thought I'd use some of that peaches, peaches, peaches pink, peaches. <laughs> I can't talk. I need to like, I don't know clear my tongue or something 
<laughs> you know, it's to like clear your throat. I have to like clear my tongue. Reset. <laughs> oh, anyway, what I'm trying to say is I thought that that peachy pink trim would tie in nicely with that other page there. Okay, and then I thought that I would take another strip of this torn piece of muslin and I'm going to stamp the edge of it again using the Tim Holtz correspondence stamps and I'm going to be using the colors in the archival ink of plum and the black to black. And I wanted to select some of the smaller stamps that had the smaller print and so I chose the air letter one, the number one, and I think special delivery. You know, I thought I used plum. I guess I don't. I guess I just used black on this. I don't know why I thought I used plum. I'm not sure why I didn't use plum. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking, I don't know why I didn't use plum and why I just chose black. Maybe I thought I already had a lot of pink going on the page and I just, I didn't need any more pink or red tones. So I just decided to stick with just the black ink. But I mean, you could use even a, I, what a color is it? The, you know, that teal blue color would look really pretty as well. I mean, actually going back, I might, I might have chose to use that and the black. I don't know. Anyway, I just, I used the jet black and then I used those three different correspondence stamps on the edge there. And as you can see, it really adds a lot to the page. I mean, if you, if I had stopped when I thought I was done originally, without adding the, I'm half afraid to say it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get all tongue tied. Uh, the peachy pink trim, and then, uh, you know, I didn't put the muslin on there. If, if those, if that trim wasn't on that edge, I mean, it just, yeah, it just adds a lot. So now, I'm going to take one of the pages from the Parisian Charm Collection and cut half of that section and keep the page that has the corset. corset. Oh my gosh! <laughs> See, this is what happens when you watch way too much British TV. <laughs> I actually caught myself doing it in the last video. I said, don't, don't. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm telling you, my mom and I, we watch a lot of British television series. I mean, a lot. We have Acorn TV and I don't know, we just we really like the British television series. Anyway, not that people, you know, not that the British would say, I don't think they'd pronounce it Chris Corsat anyway, but it just messes like in with my original accent. I guess that's what you would say, my original accent. And then you mix it in with a little bit of British and that's what you get, you get Corsat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, okay, back, back to journaling here. So what I'm doing now is I took some of the lined papers from that lined paper pad that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take my Parisian Charm page here and and then I just applied a, a strip of adhesive at the top and applied it over the lined papers. So now I have my little booklets here and how I'm going to attach this is I'm going to take some double-sided cardstock and I mean you can use whatever double-sided cardstock you want and I'm just going to uh, size it down to my little booklet of papers there 
and then I'm going to glue down just the left and right side of that card piece of cardstock and attach it to that flap to create a pocket. And then I'm going to adhere my little booklet of papers to the back side of that double-sided cardstock. So I'm just getting everything sized appropriately here. And then I'm going to take my white glue and again, just going on the left and right side of my flap to create a pocket there. And then I did uh, round off the corners there using my chomper. They had these at Hobby Lobby. I think they were 70% off. So if you all don't have one of these chompers, I would run to Hobby Lobby and see if they still have them. I can't remember the price, but it was really good. In fact, my mom and I both picked up an extra one just as a backup because we love our chompers. <laughs> but you could just use scissors to round your corners off as well. And then as you can see here, I have lots of space for journaling and I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to take another strip of adhesive and apply it to the back side of that cardstock. I had that piece, that white section showing there and I didn't like it. So I'm going to take some of my teal blue uh, eyelet lace and glue that down in that little section there on my my flap just to give it more of a finished look. And then I am going to apply just a strip of adhesive at the top of that lined paper little booklet that I created there and apply it to the back side of that double-sided cardstock. And I'm really liking the way this is turning out. And as you can see, I got lots of lined papers now to do all sorts of journaling. I think I got a little piece of glue stuck at the bottom, so I'm just trying to get that off my page there. I will have to finish that one area behind the envelope. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet, but I think it's coming along really nicely. Now, I think I want to do one more page before I call it done with this series. Um, I will be doing a tutorial on how I bind all of this together and then I will be giving the journal away, finally. <laughs> so it is coming, it's in the works. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is create another parchment pocket. This one's going to be a little different. And so I'm just cutting my sheet down to approximately six inches and I think it was by like nine and a half or nine and three quarters in length. And then I fold in or score down a half inch on each side. And then I'm just going to fold it in half after I fold in my edges. I didn't, I didn't bother scoring them. I just quickly folded the edges. And again, it was about half an inch on each side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those flaps and I'm going to, as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of creating a little miter edge there and then I'm going to cut off the top flaps all together and and this is just so when I slide something down through there it slides uh, easily you know it doesn't get hung up on those side flaps and then I'm going to take and fold down that top section there and then I'm just going to apply some glue to the sides and I have my pocket. 
Now I decided to work off a new signature page and what I did is I took some of the lined papers, the one that I did in the first part of this series, and I decided to place it inside of this pocket so I'm not going to use it in that other signature page. And now I'm just trying to figure out how I want to embellish my pocket here. And I decided to take some of my eyelet trim and apply it to the flap there. And then I thought what I would do is take some scotch tape and I'm using a Copic marker to go over it and give it kind of an aged look. And I'm going to apply that to my parchment pocket just to give it that look of it being, you know, like this old worn pocket. And then I'm going to take another piece of my Parisian charm paper and what I plan on doing there is I have this double-sided cardstock that you're seeing on the left side of my cutter there and I just I don't know I wasn't liking the look of it I wanted to use something that all of you would be able to use if you wanted to create this page so I decided to go with one of my Parisian charm papers for my digital collection and then here I'm just again trying to figure out what elements I want to use to decorate my parchment paper and I thought that I would use one of the flaps and this envelope is also from the Parisian charm collection and I thought that I would tuck it underneath the flap there. So I'm just going to distress all those edges and then apply a little bit of white glue to the very top of that flap and tuck it underneath that parchment flap there. And then I'm going to take my stamp from the correspondence uh, collection and just add a few uh, stamped impressions. <laughs> what do I want to say? Stamped images? Stamped... Stamped stamps? <laughs> Sometimes I just... Oh, I can't think of what I want to say. That's, that's why I'm so happy you can all see what I'm doing here. Anyway, I'm just going to stamp those stamps onto my parchment paper. And then again, remember that you need to take your heat gun and make sure that you set it so it doesn't smudge. And then I'm going to take, again, some of that airmail washi tape and apply it to my parchment envelope or pocket and yeah, that just kind of, again, ties everything together with the theme that I have going on here. And I decided that I was going to add just one more little strip right above where I have that scotch tape. And then I thought that I would add just a little more trim right above where I have the blue eyelet lace. I'm just, I don't know. To me, it just needed something more. <laughs> I say that a lot. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, I love things that have lots and lots and lots of layers. To me, it just... I don't know, it, it just isn't complete unless it has like, I don't know, 50 layers or so, you know? <laughs> I don't know. And then again, I thought I'd introduce more of the peachy pink eyelet trim and thought that I would place that inside the flap. I mean, it really does make a big difference. You know, I could have stopped, I guess, with the blue eyelet lace, but 
I think as you build your layers and you have all these beautiful textures and colors and so forth, it's just everything to the page. I mean, it, you can take it from being just, you know, a, a pretty page to one that has more of a wow factor. And I always try to go for that wow factor. All right, I think it's starting to get there. I thought that I would take this uh, paper doily and just apply a little bit of it to the bottom flap and maybe to the top section as well, right up there. Kind of liking the white. It ties in with the lace, that white lace that I have on the Parisian charm paper on the left side of my page. So I think I'm going to, yeah, just add that paper doily and then I think it's coming along quite nicely there. I thought that I would also apply some of that peachy pink eyelet lace to the bottom of my pocket. And then I'm just going to take some of my glue and glue the sides and the bottom to create another pocket, a back pocket there, and attach it to my page. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the left side of my page here and I'm taking some of that lined paper and I thought that I would somehow have it to where I could add in my journaling space but still have my page showing underneath, you know, to have that decorative, artistic element to my page. So what I thought I would do is fussy cut out the part with the hand and I thought I would attach a paper clip behind there and use that to secure my lined papers to the top of the page is kind of my my plan here. I also cut out some of the text and decided that I would use those as other elements to either this page or the other page. So I cut out that and the Paris. And then I also fussy cut around where it says art journal and decided to use that on the flap of my parchment pocket there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I wanted to make a smaller white envelope. So I'm using one that I tore apart as my template to show you how you could all make one in case you don't have these on hand. So I'm cutting a five by five inch square. And then I'm going to go in one inch on the left side and then on the other side I'm going over one and five eighths inch and so I'm going to score on the left side there at one inch and then for the right I'm going to score at the one and five eighths inch so the center is two and one eighths inch width and then my top flap is one inch and my bottom flap is one half inch. Okay, so I'm taking again my five by five inch sheet of paper here and I actually did this on my 110 pound white cardstock and I'm making those score marks as I shown previously. And then where I scored, 
at those intersections there, I want to cut out those sections to create my flaps. So I have my top flap and my bottom flap and my side flaps. And then I'm just going to glue it and to all together and I will have my little white envelope. And I'm just rounding off those corners there. And then I'm just going to glue my flaps down. And glue the bottom flap up. And I have my little white envelope. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I have this small piece that I cut just big enough to where I can stamp air letter again the stamp from the Tim Holtz correspondence set and what I'm going to do is take this little piece that I stamped and glue it down onto my small white envelope there that I just made and create a tuck spot for that top flap so it'll be my enclosure for my envelope. So I'm going to glue just the bottom and right corner of that little piece there. And as you can see, it creates a perfect little tuck spot for that top flap of my envelope. And then I'm going to take a few receipts that I have, and I just got these at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to take and just grunge them up a little bit, distress them, make them look old, and work them into my page. So I decided to use one of my new stamps. This is one of my new Carabelle stamps, and I loved the registered letter stamp that I had, I wanted to do a full thing of just different sorts of postage stamps, but I wasn't able to get the go on that, <laughs> which I was really bummed about. Maybe I could still try and dock them into it, but um, at least I got this one and I thought it would work nicely with this collection. So yeah, I decided to use that on my lined paper and then I also used the stained or the spill splatter uh, stencil from Tim Holtz and apply a little bit of that airmail washi tape just to kind of give some decorative elements to my lined paper there and then I decided to Distress another piece of scotch tape, again just using my Copic marker to give the tape an aged look. And I'm going to add that to my lined paper as well. I just think it really gives it that aged look. And yeah, I think I, I like the look of, of this. And I'll probably end up doing this with some of the other lined papers that I did in those little booklets. But for now, this is just to kind of show you and give you ideas on how you can decorate some of your plain lined papers. And then I want to incorporate my small white envelope. And I thought one way of doing that is by using that hand that I fussy cut. And it's just wide enough to where that handle goes down through that little slot there. And then I'm going to put a paper clip behind it to hold my lined paper. And I thought I might add in the receipts as well, not sure yet, but I take a small paper clip and some of the fabric glue and I'm just applying that glue to the back of that hand that I fussy cut out and then I'm going to attach a paper clip to the back. 
just a really easy way of adding a little embellishment to your page. Love it. I absolutely love it. And I wanted to show you really quick. I just got these in and they'll be available for sale at my shop. I uh, was thrilled when I saw these. They're the new Prima paper clips and they're just, oh, they're wonderful for a project like this. Anything that you like, like vintage or, or Jane journals or just, I mean, they would go with so many different things, but I loved them. And so I, I actually got them for just myself. <laughs> But um, I thought I should pick up some extras because I thought if you saw me using them in the journal, you might want them. And so, yes, I will be carrying these. I'll have the link below in the description that will lead you to where you can find them for sale on my site. So I just took and used one of those paper clips. It didn't really serve a purpose other than just to give a decorative element to my little parchment pocket there. And then I took and glued down that art journal text that I fussy cut out from the Parisian, there we go again, <laughs> from the Parisian, oh my god, I can't say it, the Parisian charm page. <laughs> you know, it's getting to be like two in the morning, you know how it gets. Um, these videos, they, they think they, they take me like around oh four or five hours to edit sometimes so yeah it gets kind of daunting after a little while okay so what I'm doing now is I'm taking and just fussy cutting that girl from one of the embroidered lace papers and I thought that she would look really cute on that small white envelope that I have at the upper left corner of my page I love the way that this looks. I love all the different layers and it was so easy. It, you know, it just, yeah, I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. Now I'm thinking it's a little bulky, so I decided to take the receipt and I added in another uh, one of the green receipts to the other side of my pocket there, my page. I also added the text that I cut out that was in French and I I glued it onto the edge of that longer receipt and you can see that on the right side in the pocket there. Somehow I accidentally cut that out from the video but I wanted to make sure I mentioned that and so I'm just adding a few little details to these receipts and um, trying to figure out where I want to put this Paris. I think I'm going to use it as a tab. I really like the way it looks there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and back it with some of my 110 pound white cardstock again because it's a tab I want it to have some durability and then I'm going to glue it to the side of my page there and then it's pretty much done. I'm just going to take and uh, paper clip my small white envelope and lined papers to the top of my left page, add that tab to the right page, and it is done. I hope you all enjoyed this second part of the Jane theme journal making series. I always welcome your comments and I would love to hear if there's anything you would like to see me do a tutorial on. I do plan on doing the tutorial on the binding of this journal, I'm gonna put it all together and then I'm going to finally give this journal away to one lucky winner. So again, thank you everyone for all the support. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.